It's been about a month since I made a video about bolt modding IBM Model M keyboards. Uh, I did a fairly crappy job <laughs> explaining how to properly bolt mod an IBM Model M in that video, and um, I've done quite a few more of them since then. So I just wanted to sort of make an apology video, I guess, in a way, but also just sort of show you um, what I learned in the meantime. So the first thing I'm going to do is is demonstrate to you uh, how you might be able to tell if your if your Model M needs a bolt modification. Most of them do because they're old. Um, very few don't, but uh, uh, the newer ones typically don't. They haven't aged quite enough. But this this one this this Model M is from I think it's from 1988 or so, and um, it has not been bolt modified. It is it, it, it needs one pretty badly. I think it's missing like uh, almost 30, 30 rivets or so. So I'm just going to type on it just so you can hear it. You might not be able to hear it. That's okay. Um, uh, so I'm going to type. Here we go. Now, of course, without anything to compare it to, it's like, yeah, that's a keyboard. Fine, but... <clears throat> If you can listen closely, you'll hear a slight ping. Ping, ping, ping. You hear a slight ping <clears throat> when you type on a key. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Lots of keys ping on, on even even uh, perfect keyboards. But when when lots of them start to ping like that, uh, you you, you kind of know it's time for to, for a bolt mod. Uh, Another sort of tip off is that lots of them ping, and when they ping, they have slightly different pitches. So, that Y is particularly pingy. So, you can hear that. Now, I'm just going to compare that against, just so you have some frame of reference, against a. Uh, keyboard that I recently bolt modded. I bolt modded it slightly improperly so I have to take it apart again but <clears throat> at least the half of it that I did bolt mod properly works. So this is after you know I've, I've taken the plastic rivets off and replaced them with bolts on the back side. Um, and Here's what, it, here's what it sounds like, and this is probably what it sounded like out of the factory when it was first made. Okay. You notice that there's very little pinginess to it. You know, there's no, there's no spring sound to it. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's, uh, you know, I think there, there are keys on this keyboard that do have a slight ping to them. You know, that one, that one does. But... Uh, more importantly, all the keys sound, well, not all the keys, but most of the keys sound fairly uniform. You know, they, they all sound the same, which is a good, uh, a good signifier that the keyboard is working optimally. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is one of the Apologize for some of my mistakes in the last video, so I'll uh, I'll I'll get some stuff together and be right back. Well, I pre-apologize for the audio, but I did want to. I'm too lazy to set up my good mic. I'm I'm just lazy. I'm a lazy lazy man. Uh, but I did want to get into. I'm I'm about to bolt mod this board. I actually even started, and then I realized I wasn't filming. And uh, I figured out, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd do something about that. So, in any case, um, I have here a board that is quite nice. It's a 1989 Model M. And it pretty badly needed a bolt mod. It, it had um, quite a few rivets missing. So, what I did was I actually um, removed a few rivets... And one of the things that I did incorrectly in my previous video was that as I was removing the rivets, I didn't pay much attention to the rivets I had removed, which which ones I had removed. 
So the first thing that I that I do now a days when I'm removing stuff is that when I take a rivet off, I mark it with a sharpie. Take another rivet off. That one didn't even need any much coaxing. Mark it with a sharpie, etc., etc. Um, and what this does is that when you have this back plate off and when you're you know need to drill holes it's much easier to to know where to drill holes if you if you pre-mark them ahead of time it, if so, th there are holes on this board for example like this one right here um, where there's no corresponding hole in the rubber mat between the uh, the base plate and the barrel plate and if you you know, you, you you just sort of say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna drill a hole where where all the holes on the on the back plate are. Well, that's not good enough. You need to you need to pay attention to where all the where all the rivets are that you take off. And sometimes that's a little tricky because lots of rivets are already missing. But you you do your best and um, and you mark mark the ones you can. So uh, basically, just mark all of them as you take the rivets off. Uh, and then you can you know which ones that you have to uh, have to drill at that point. All right, again, sorry for the audio quality. It's it can't be very good. I got the air conditioner going. I was much more careful in my first video, but I just cannot be bothered. So um, I've taken all the rivets off of this thing that I can. Well, well, there's one left. Wow. Okay. Um, and previously I had problems getting, getting the, the base plate off the, off the barrel plate. So I was sort of, I was sort of taking, taking the chisel and kind of moving it back and forward. And, and in my last video, what happened was I ended up with a broken barrel plate. So I, I'm not quite sure when the barrel plate broke, but all my, all my maneuvering couldn't have possibly helped. And there's no reason to do any of that. There's no reason to dig around inside of the board to, to try to separate the barrel and the base plate. This one appears to just want to come off, you know, almost without without a problem. But all you really have to do is make sure that the uh, the rivets or the what's the what's left of the rivets anyway are are pushed down here. So you just want to take your chisel and work around the board. And just kind of push down. If the, if you've sort of half taken off a rivet, uh, you want to you want to you know sort of scrape again and get the rest of it off. But in general, there's no real reason to to pry. Uh, it, it's it, it's a bad thing to be prying. Uh, okay. Well, I got everything off, and now we can see that this board is I made a big deal before about the springs popping out that's just not a concern at all they don't pop out on you if you if you don't pry they don't pop so no big thing you take all this stuff out and make sure to keep it together and now now I have the keycaps on these, so all these springs are going to be popped out here. But wasn't that a hell of a lot easier than the, the last time I did this? Well, you wouldn't know. You probably didn't watch the last one. I lived the last one, man. I lived it. Uh, wasn't that good. Interestingly, it's almost as if, as if someone has taken this part before, or somehow this this one little piece over here didn't get inserted luckily I have a replacement for that there in any case you know that was way less dramatic than the last time I tried it and fine no no worries yeah I'm back again uh, I just wanted to describe how to better uh, better than my last video about how to know which holes to mark basically after you get um, the keys out you can put 
this rubber mat back on. Uh, this is important. You, you need to kind of do both of these things, both the rubber mat and the membrane. I think I have it on the right way. Do I? No, I have it on the wrong way. Uh, and with that, you can tell which one of these, which ones of these uh, posts that you need to come off. I've, I've marked them already with uh, some black magic marker. But you can just kind of, you know, put a little dot on each one that has corresponding holes through both the mat and through the, the membrane so you don't drill a hole that can't go through. There, there are holes in the, or, or there are posts, what look like posts on the barrel plate that have no corresponding holes on the rubber mat and sometimes not on the membrane either. So you just want to do only the ones that will for sure go through. And then once you have the uh, posts that you want to drill out marked, uh, what you want to do is you do not want to confuse yourself. Just take your time and as you cut off the pieces of the, of the board that you're going to drill through, uh, you're going to clip off the, the, the Sharpie that you use. So you want to just do one at a time, one at a time. Keep doing that until they're all off. Do not cut them all off and then try to remember which ones are true and which ones are not. Just do one at a time. And it's a little bit painful, but you get there. All right, now that we have uh, little dots in all the right dotty places, we can just uh, make some pilot holes. And for this, I've, I've just been using an X-Acto knife. Helps, helps if it's pretty sharp and it also helps if when you put the mark on the, the where you want to put the bolt uh, that you, you kind of be careful about it and try to put it mostly in the center of the thing of the the rivet post that you cut off because it's just easier to, on your brain to just do you know you put your put your knife in there and twist it around and just lay it on the dot um, if you if you don't mark the middle of the post uh, where the post used to be, then you gotta sort of do the translation in your head. But in any case, that's all. You just you just do all of them. Just keep going around. Just for the sake of completeness, uh, just show you. I sort of put this uh, barrel plate in this in this little jig. Just gonna drill the holes after we after we put the uh, pilot holes in there. Try to keep it as straight as possible. And etc. 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 Now you want to be pretty careful that you don't bend the barrel plate too much, uh, or you will snap it. And one hint to that is to put paint stirrers at just about the perfect height to fit under the barrels of this thing to sort of keep it up as you do this. And that'll lessen the chance that you're going to snap it. If you do snap it, it'll snap somewhere around here or here. I've tried various things to fix snapped barrel plates with not much success, unless it's very, very small. And even then, I think it's probably doomed. Um, you can actually buy new barrel plates on unicompccboard.com uh, if you do snap yours. So, <clears throat> see them in there. And they're all in the right place, hopefully. Um, so we just flip it over and we continue the same jig. We put the paint stirs on the outside this time to reduce the chance of the barrel plate snapping <clears throat> on each, each outside there. That makes it sort of nice and uh, nice and stable, a little bit less flexy when we go to screw things in, which we do. And we just do it by hand and do one of them here. Yep, 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 yep. Until it starts to a little friction on it. Just leave it like that. That one in. Got to do a billion more. Got the rest of the billion screws in there. Uh, and before we try to put any keys back in, 
I want to just do a test fit. Sort of put this rubber mat on. Seems like all the holes we drilled have holes in the rubber mat, so that's good. Always good when you have holes in posts and they both line up. And now you find your base plate and try to see if you can make all those screws line up with holes on the base plate. And this one, it seems like seems like most of them are going to go through first shot. That's pretty unusual. Um, maybe some of them aren't quite as aligned as they could be, but uh, in any case, if there are any that don't don't uh, want to th that are not lined up properly, let's say you drilled a hole, you know, a little bit too far left or right or up or down, uh, just unscrew the uh, unscrew the screw and put a little piece of tape over it so uh, so that there's no there's no easy ingress for water um, because you know there's so many screws it really doesn't make any difference if one or two of them are missing uh, so yeah that's it alright we've been looking at this top side of my, my jig here my rig uh, which has screws in it now I had done enough of these where just having boxes laying around was becoming not much fun uh, boxes to prop up either side of it so this this jig is actually just a piece of board some screws on top of it that I can use to, to rope it down with some rubber bands on the other side of it uh, I have a couple of pieces of you know scrap wood that I just lay that down on and then I can suspend the barrel plate and start putting the keys in or sorry, the spring's in, and uh, I don't have to worry about anything sliding out or anything. So, anyway, that's that's what I did to solve that. As you can tell, I finished uh, screwing down all these all these nuts. And one one other thing that I wanted to mention is that it's a wise investment to get a two millimeter nut driver to uh, screw these in here instead of an adjustable wrench. I, I used an adjustable wrench last time. That was not good. Uh, with this thing it's a lot quicker. So now we can see I, I already sort of reassembled it and tested it and everything. It works fine. Um, but we can hear this thing is going to be beautiful now I bet. Q was, or which one was pingy before? Why? Not anymore. Beautiful. This is a kick-ass keyboard, man. Here it is in the case. Oh God, it's so great. Jeez, man. They, it really is. I mean, if you spend, you know, uh, take your time doing this. Uh, they're hard to screw up, and once they're done, you have a wonderful keyboard that'll last for a long time. Wonderful. Love it.